Hey, much love and respect to everybody that's tuned in. Thank you for uh, tuning in once again. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Wanted to bring it back to uh, one of my favorite series, Untold Ancient American Truth. This is part 17. We're going to be talking about the Calico early man site. But before that, just want to uh, go ahead and invite everybody, especially my new subscribers, to uh, check out my different playlist. One of the playlists is, of course, Untold Ancient American Truth. We're in part one right here, but you can see that it's uh, all in order right here, all the way to part 16 and some added videos of mine that uh, deals with, you know, untold ancient American truth, you know, so that's why they're here. You got a total of 54 videos right here to go through uh, just in case you're new. Just want to remind everybody what we learned all the way back in part one. We learned what Louis Agassiz was said. He was one of the most famous geologists that ever existed. If you take geology in college or universities, uh, it's part of your curriculum to read geological sketches. Very first page, very first chapter. He calls it America, the old world. And uh, as we have on the screen here, let me just read. First born among the continents, though much later in culture and civilization than some of more recent birth. Well, we've already debunked that. We have the oldest civilization too. America, so far as her physical history is concerned, has been falsely denominated the new world. Hers was the first dry land lifted out of the waters. America was the first out of the waters. They're letting you know here. Hers was the first shore washed by the ocean that enveloped all the earth beside. That's why we had the oldest mammals. Remember they said that the oldest mammals was right there. All right, over here in the Pennsylvania period in Pennsylvania area. And while Europe was represented only by islands rising here and there above the sea, America already stretched an unbroken line of land from Nova Scotia to the far west. All right, there's a footnote right here. It says it would be inexpedient to encumber these pages with references to all the authorities on which such geological results rest. All right, many, many of his colleagues, many other geologists, many other scientists of that time prestige people scholarly people concluded the same all right oldest land is in america the oldest land out of the primordial waters they are drawn from various state surveys including that of the mineral lands of lake superior in which the early rise of the american continent is for the first time affirmed and other more general works on american geology okay again america the old world america the old world so today we're going to be learning about the calico um site i just want to remind everybody i also have a video it's uh part 14 of this series which is uh guadalupe woman the oldest modern human bones on earth yes here in america millions of years old here human bones not monkey bones human bones so check out all the rest of the videos i recommend it all right so we're gonna get going with uh today's video all right, so I'm going to uh, get into this book. Great book. Somebody recommended it. I was I go through my comments. It's like a comment I got like two years ago. And I finally reached the comment. And I saw the source. And I was like, oh, interesting. And uh, I went to the page he told me to. But then I, I ended up realizing 
all of the chapters are pretty good so we're gonna read a lot of these uh chapters there's a lot of good sources on this and he has sources in the back of the book for everything he's writing so that was one good thing i was able to verify as i was reading so we'll do some further investigation all the topics that we come up with uh, in the book this book again uh, is called american indian myths and mysteries by vincent h gaddis says a book to put beside von daniken and carlos castaneda a mind-opening exploration of the startling ancient roots and sacred powers of wizardry and prophecy we go to chapter uh, one all right let me zoom in Whence came the Amerindian, huh? They don't know where you came from, huh? <laughs> they never do. That's what I'm saying. So anything they add is conjecture because they don't really know. Now we're going to read a little bit of this, what it's going to get into. Interesting little uh, topic here. Brought it to my awareness. So I, I did some further investigation and I'm like, wow, another site, another archaeological site in California going back very far back. All right, I'm going to talk about it. Says here the Mojave Desert between Los Angeles and Las Vegas stretches over sandy, desolate wastelands to sterile gray and purple hills. During the summers, the 100 degree plus heat laces the dry air with shimmering waves. Nights bring a penetrating cold, and when the rare rains come, flash floods sweep down age old riverbeds. But winter days can be sunny and pleasant with moderate temperatures inviting the visitor to explore the trails and canyons so shrouded in timeless silence. It was on such a day in December 1948 that Rittner Salis made his great discovery, an amateur archaeologist and dairy farmer. He had been performing a survey along the Mojave River bed for the San Bernardino County Museum. He decided to climb up a grade above the dry channel to get a wider view of the area in so doing he found himself on a spot hallowed by eons of time today the mojave is a desert but it was not always so silas was standing on the shoreline of what had been a large lake in the pleistocene epic all right a large lake there were so many lakes there in california all right large lakes in the Pleistocene epic real quick Pleistocene. what does that mean it says this refers to an ice age right it's the geological epic that lasted from about two and a half million right years ago to eleven thousand seven hundred years ago all right so anywhere between that period uh period huh in the mojave desert there was a lake there a long time ago a lake of blue waters surrounded by swampy land and tall grass inhabited by game a lot of animals remember the ancient animals videos a lot of them in california all these different types of camels and horses elephants all that remember surveyors observing the archaic water lines of the long vanished body of water had named it lake mannix all right lake mannix read a little bit about lake mannix today as he walked along the crest of the rise Salis noticed with surprise some stones, right? What did he find? Some stones. They had obviously been chipped by primitive men long ago. They had to be. It's artificial. His weapons and his knives, man-made. These stones, they were chipped by primitive man. It was so obvious. Why? So what's the problem? Oh, we'll see. So began the Calico Mountain archaeological project near Barstow. Three miles from the Calico ghost town on Interstate Highway 15. The late Dr. LSB Le Leakey, all right, so that's the guy, one of the archaeologists that went there. We're going to get what he said. Just real quick Calico early man site, all right, early man site, Calico. And it says here, Louis Seymour Bassett Leakey, archaeologist from 1903 to 1972. I guess he lived, it says in 1959, Leakey while at the British Museum of Natural History in London, received a visit from Ruth Deed Simpson, an archaeologist from California. Simpson had acquired what looked like an ancient ancient scrapers from a site in the Calico Hills and showed it to Leakey. In 1963, Leakey obtained funds from the National Geographic Society and commenced archaeological excavations with Simpson. 
So these two ar archaeologists were digging up over there in Calico Hills, right, California. So Dee Simpson was an important woman archaeologist at a time when the field of archaeology was still dominated by men. She was born in Los Angeles, California. She received her master's degree from the University of Southern California in 1944. She went on to be the curator of the Heard, Mu Heard Museum in Arizona for two years. She was a curator of the Southwest Museum in Los Angeles, California from 1946 to 1964. In 1964, she became the county archaeologist at the San Bernardino County Museum in Redlands, California. Although she pursued many important archaeological projects, mostly in the Mojave Desert in California, she spent much of her life working with Dr. Louis Leakey on the Calico Early Man site in Yermo, California. She was a member of the American Anthropologists Association and the Society of American Archaeology, all right? So basically what I'm trying to show is it wasn't just some regular people uh, in Calico, right, working on this. And they said something and nobody paid attention to them. They had a lot of credit. They had a lot of um, good uh, reputation. They were respected in their fields, you know, working for working with National Geographic and the British Museum of Natural History, where Leakey was coming from. So again, the Calico Early Man site. What does Wikipedia say? Just uh, some common knowledge, what you can find, just if you Google real quick. It says the Calico Early Man site is an archaeological site and an ancient Pleistocene lake, all right? It's an, from an ancient Pleistocene lake. Remember, that's between two and a half million to 11, 700,000 years ago. Right, but we're going to see what they determined based on their archaeology and their science, right? So it's located near Barstow in San Bernardino County in the central Mojave Desert of Southern California. The site is on in late middle Pleistocene flagomerates known variously as the Calico Hills, the Yermo Hills, or the Yermo farm Formation. Hollow scene evidence includes petroglyphs and trail segments that are probably related to outcrops of local high-quality siliceous rock. The Calico Early Man includes artifacts of the Lake Mannix Lithic, of the Lake Mannix Lithic, all right, from the lake, ancient lake. Industry found on and just below the surface at elevations greater than 543 meters or 1,781 feet. The shoreline elevation of 236 kilometers squared, uh, freshwater Pleistocene Lake, which emptied approximately 18,000 years ago. So it's at least, at least, at least that old. Material recovered from nested Pleistocene alluvial deposits stratigraphically beneath a 100,000 year old soil profile, a rock ring, not a fire hearth, dated to 135,000 years by thermal luminescence. All right. That's how they dated it. You see how old they're dating these artifacts? They're talking about artifacts, about 200,000 years by uranium series analysis, and about 197 plus or minus 20,000 years by surface beryllium. You see this? Like, this is what we're about to read. Okay, so that's just real quick, Calico Early Man site. So we go back in the book, and that's how they began the Calico, again, Mountain Archaeological Project with those two archaeologists. And it was uh, about three miles from the Calico ghost town. There's literally a ghost town here. Uh, they kind of like, I guess, fixed it up because now it's like an attraction. It looks all nice and now and everything. But I guess there is a story there of uh, people. It was a mining town, so a mining family town. Uh, that's where they lived, I guess in the 1800s so i guess they fixed up the town i guess you know this is the ghost town now they call it the ghost town this is an older picture i guess of the ghost town right the old town so they have kind of like fixed it up made it look nice now they got shops and everything look at that look at that so nice old uh all wooden you know house and again the calico ghost town it says largest silver mining camp in california 1896 or 1881 to 1896 see that Calico Hills. So this is where they're near here, three miles from here is where they're finding these archaeological, where the ancient lake was. So it says the late Dr. L.S.B. Leakey, right, the guy we just read about, renowned discoverer of the oldest known human remains at Old Duvai Gorge in East Africa. All right. Again, these are not even modern humans he found over there. Not even modern humans. Go do the study so you can see they're not modern humans. They're still a little apish, unfortunately. And you would have to believe in Darwinism, right? Evolution, if you want to go with those bones. All right, but it's interesting that they sent a 
an archaeologist who's one of their famous ones because he has he was the one that determined the oldest known human remains supposedly why did they send him to go see this uh archaeological spot right here in california he knows something all right he knows right if he says these are the oldest we should trust his word right if they trust him over there believe so now he says he believed that man came to america much earlier than the period assigned by most of his fellow archaeologists all right this guy you heard him the guy who supposedly discovered you know the neanderthal uh homo sapienish you know <laughs> bones over there in east africa the oldest known human remains supposedly he says there was people Right, there was people. He doesn't. He doesn't know if they came there or they were already there. But he says he knows there was people earlier than period assigned by most of his fellow archaeologists. There was already people there, way before they're saying. He persuaded the National Geographic Society to support the exploratory excavation. He said, "Yo, come check this out." In California, the surface rocks and flakes were of relatively recent times. But Dr. Leakey suspected that the site had been an ancient workshop for making stone tools ancient ancient workshop ancient making stone tools for many many millennia who dr leaky that's their sign that's their main guy i gotta pay attention to what dr leaky was saying he was working with that other lady the anthropologist archaeologist right she had mad degrees too he indicated where the first master pit should be dug fragments of mastodon tusk appeared at 13 feet at 14 feet the dedicated workers found the first artifacts buried in the alluvial soil implements of chalcedony jasper and shirt that offered sharp long-lasting cutting edges 23 feet down the 15 foot square shaft reached a hearth of 13 boulders arranged in the form of a capital c In the center of the semicircle, the prehistoric hunters had built fires to warm themselves. There was people there. They have evidence of it as they shipped their tools while sitting in the open space of the hearth ring. Tests with the rocks that had reflected the heat disclosed they had been heated to 400 degrees centigrade on the sides facing the fire. Estimated ages range from 20,000 years for the surface artifacts to 50,000 50, years ago, right? Way before they, they, they said there was humans here for the buried relics. But as the two master pits attained depths of well over 30 feet and artifacts continued to be found, they went 30 feet down and they still kept finding artifacts. So they're like, hold up, it's, whoa, hold up, we're not done. We're not done. Surprise was succeeded by bewilderment. All right, who's doing this? Leaky. So I'm at the uh, Britannica Encyclopedia uh, online. All right, and uh, I got the guy here. This is the guy they sent to do the uh, investigation, right? His archaeological knowledge. And we're going to, I mean, this guy is pretty important in history. I mean, especially for the hijack. All right, because again, Let's, see, let's read, all right? And I want you to dodge the hijack big time. We're not talking about humans when you're talking about he found something in East Africa. They're not modern humans. But let's read again. This guy was actually born in Kenya. He was born in Africa. He's, you know, his parents were there, missionaries supposedly. And uh, yeah, he was born in Kenya. So Louis Leakey in full, uh, Louis Seymour, but said Leakey, also called Louis as B. Leakey, All right, was born in Kenya and he died in London. Kenyan archaeologist and anthropologist whose fossil discoveries in East Africa proved that human beings were far older than had previously been believed and that human evolution was centered in Africa. All right, out of Africa, that's one of the main guys right here. And if you're going to believe him, if you're going to believe him about Africa, why can't why don't they believe him when he said he went to California? And he's finding things at 30 feet below human habitation. That's way older. We're going to see. They're going to be talking about 100,000, 200,000 years ago. What you talking about, Africa? Yeah, that's why. Because then you kind of proved yourself wrong right there. And again, these are, again, these bones 
I don't know if that's the one he's holding up. They weren't modern human. So he's saying everything started in Africa rather than in Asia, as earlier discoveries had suggested. Leakey was also noted for his controversial interpretations of these archaeological finds. All right, so we're back in the book, all right? And what he was saying, he believed that man came to America or that man was already in America. He doesn't know if they came. They don't know. They're asking the question. But he knows, right, that they were there in America much earlier than the period assigned by most of his fellow archaeologists. He persuaded them to go dig it up, right? Remember? So he went 30 feet below. So after they had already found relics and they were giving them dates of 50,000 already, but as two master pits attained depth of well over 30 feet and artifacts continued to be found, surprise was succeeded by bewilderment. Dr. Thomas Clemens, retired chairman of the geology department of the University of Southern California and project geologist, believes 100,000 years is the maximum age of the site. He's given it up to 100,000 years. That's humans in California. Like, look, this is pe important people, chairman of the geology department. And then Leakey, all right? This is important stuff they never told us. They didn't even want us to even think about this stuff. More than 100 scientists, all right? From all parts of the world, 100 scientists from all parts of the world attended the Calico international conference looking into that at the san bernardino county museum in bloomington california in october of 1970 1970 and read uh, from this article real quick it says here that uc uh, merced journal of california and great bastion anthropology uh papers on california prehistory two and uh, this is the publication date 1989 and I'm going to go down here. It says, again, papers on, on California prehistory too. Salinas Coyote Press, Archives of California, reviewed by A.B. L. Cesar. It says, this volume includes three papers by Keith Dixon, Joseph and Kerry Shartkoff, and William Wallace, in that order. Dixon's paper, Archaeology and Geology in the Calico Mountains. Results of the International Conference on the Calico Project is reprinted from 1970 newsletter of California State University, Long Beach. It appears in the present collection, no doubt, was based on initial limited distribution of a carefully balanced report of an important international meeting at San Bernardino in October of 1970. It's the uh, international conference we just read about. The conference was attended by an usually impressive group of Paleolithic archaeologists and geologists literally from all over the world, Japan, Siberia, Africa, Europe, and the Near East, with LSB Leakey, all right, the, that guy, the leading sponsor, being the most well-known on the list here presented, all right? He was the most well-known in the world. That's the guy who said, hey, man, they've been there that long. Despite the eminence of the group and perhaps expectations of definitive conclusions on the dating of the site and its allegedly man-made lithic tools, Dixon was not able to present an entirely favorable picture of the Calico site as the earliest representative of human occupation in the New World. He emphasized meticulous excavation techniques of the group led by Ruth Simpson and certainly did not write off the site as unprovably ancient, all right? He doesn't know. He says, I don't know. I'm not sure. They couldn't prove them wrong either. Or the tools as ma made by nature. It was like, definitely not made by nature. They looked man-made. Moreover, he made cogent suggestions as to the direction future research should take regarding analysis of the site and its contents. Unfortunately, almost 20 years later, the original proposals regarding the age and tool associations have not been widely accepted. Listen, all right, this is important. This is why I'm doing this video so you guys can know. They actually gave this site a date and all these tools, and they didn't accept them. These were really scholarly people leaders in their field at that time. Same people they're saying the out of Africa stuff over there, right? Again, unfortunately, almost 20 years later, the original proposals regarding the age and tool associations have not been widely accepted in neither of the recent summaries, 1984, of California archaeology by Morado and JL and KK Shartkoff is the Calico site given much more than a dubious status. Meanwhile, 
Simpson, in 1989, has reported a uranium series date of 200,000 years as a suggested date of early human occupation of the site. Early human occupation, 200,000 years in California. Supplementing the 1970 estimates based on geological data. The difficulties of accepting this date together with what may be considered negative arguments regarding the nature and dating of the tools in his work with angle platforms would seem to place the calico material in an even more questionable position than it was in 1970 when dixon wrote nevertheless simpson and others appear undaunted and continue the defense of the calico project presenting copious data of the lithic material which whatever the dating appears tantalizingly similar to certified man-made objects it's the same but they're not accepting it you see i'm right, gonna read uh from this article real quick uh it's called on the nature and antiquity of the manix lake industry by douglas b uh, bamford and ronald i dorn uh, this is again from the journal of california and great basin anthropology volume 10 number 2 1988 from pages 209 to 226 Going to read a little bit of this article again uh, these are the authors department of anthropology university of nebraska lincoln that's his guy and ronald dorn department of geography arizona state says the antiquity of human occupation in the new world undoubtedly is one of the major unresolved cultural historical problems in north american prehistory they don't know right so anything they tell you again is conjecture they've been telling you for years that it's still still unresolved all right, they've been telling you for years, these are real, real archaeologists, real scientists. On the one hand, a dominant position with a long history in American archaeology. Uh, Wilson, like this is why holds that human beings arrived in the New World at the close of the Pleistocene, no longer than 12,000 years ago. And that Clovis site represent the oldest occupation in the Americas. All right, so that's the false story we've always been getting. We've already debunked the Clovis thing. I mean, Graham Hancock debunked them. We've already found so many different sites, right? Older than that, 12,000 years ago. They're finding them all over the place now. On the other hand, a less widely accepted school of thought sees a variety of evidence for human occupation in the Americas well back into the Pleistocene, with dates ranging from 19,000 before the present, like 20,000 years ago, uh, at Meadowcroft, Rochester, Pennsylvania, uh, to 32,000 at Bori Boquiero, the Sitio de Pedro in Brazil, uh, and to at least 220,000 before the present at where Calico Hills in California, 220,000 years ago in California, human habitation, all right? Another scholarly journal letting you know there's a whole bunch of people, all right? The whole conference, that international conference is what they basically determined. Unfortunately, much of the debate between these two positions is characterized by preliminary research reports past examinations of sites, a near absence of published data, and unsystematic and incomplete analysis. This is particularly true when the debate is over claims for early occupation in Southern California, a region that has produced more purportedly early material than any other part of North America. So again, check out my video I did on the Calavera Skull from California. All right, this is old, old. They're tank telling you they've been finding bones there this whole time this the whole time in the pleocene man in america pleocene millions of years ago calavera skull the calavera skull check out my video on that all right part 16 untold ancient american truth so again this is particularly true when the debate is over claims for early occupation in southern california a region that has produced more purportedly early material than any other part of north america all right, so this article kind of breaks down all the proof they had and everything and, and the measurements they did. I just want to read to you the two main hypotheses, right? The two major hypotheses, the two basic hypotheses, as it says here, summary and conclusions. Two basic hypotheses can be defined in the debate over the Manus Lake industry. The first champion by Simpson posed that certain isolated artifacts found embedded in desert pavements above the 17. 180 foot shoreline of Pleistocene Manix Lake represented late Pleistocene lakeside human occupation. Very old, man. The second, most explicitly framed by Glennon, holds that these artifacts are quarry debris found on desert pavements. Fortunately, 
Fortunately, above the 1700 feet level and that embeddedness is payment is no guarantee of great antiquity. All right, so that's the only argument. They're saying if they're not man-made, then they're just like pieces of rock from Corian. This is little pieces of the, the Corian. And that's not true. If you guys really go look at the artifacts, they are man-made. That's not even debatable. So they automatically lose they automatically lose this argument you see that's their only argument they're man-made so they're trying to prove they're not man-made that's their only argument because they were found in these deposits that are very old let's hear calico redux artifacts or geofacts christopher hart docker earth measure research on closer inspection Calico does not appear to be a natural rock crushing geofactory. It's not from natural causes. It's not pieces of, of them mining. Nor is it the case that Calico is bereft of definite and repetitive artifact types. Most tool types are either unifacial, included notched specimens, or bifacial in nature. Hundreds of them. And delicately notched perforators, re immerse gravers there are dozens of artifact types and subtypes represented and there are thousands of flakes and tool types without cortex and with multiple flake scars after review of the controversy tabulated data are presented this paper reports on the findings from an examination of over 70,000 fractured subsurface lithic specimens from sbcm 1500a the calico early man site located just east of barstow california the fractured material are shirt, chalcedony, agate, jasper, and other siliceous varieties from medium to high quality. Okay, so they're breaking it down, what they're finding there. They're saying it's not natural, right? All right, continuing a little bit further. So the oldest accepted Paleo-American finds in the Mojave Desert were all surface artifacts. Calico's five feet by five feet units were going down 20 feet in a dead fan. Tensions were high. A conference held in 1970 resulted in a hung jury and thoughts that the site's age might be half a million years old. Such an antiquity, 500,000 to 100,000 years for a new world site was simply too extreme at the time. In 1973, Science published C. Vance Haynes' critical article that effectively, though hypothetically dismissed Calico's collection from serious attention, Haynes listed a number of agencies capable of fracturing shirt at the outcrop source of the fan materials during transport and post depositionally. The article is persuasive because it ascribes a highly dynamic geological scenario to the alluvial fan building process at Calico. With all those forces in play, nature could just about make any kind of simple tool for imaginable, even by facially flagged edges and delicate backs. So there was, they're saying something in 19, 1973 published that was going against trying to disprove it. That it was natural basically they used all kinds of geological explanations to try to say how how these things that are so looking man-made right they're so man-made we can see their knives and all this stuff and tools they try to explain how they were made by nature so the guy's making fun of him saying man well when you grab the forces in play all those forces when you're describing nature can make anything Anything that you can imaginable, even by facially flaked edges and like it begs. The continuing absence of spearheads and human bone apparently clinched for hence the non-artificial nature of the assemblage. Most, if not all, the professionals with curious eye and Calico after 1970 conference turned away when the article was published. Few felt confident enough about their lithics, lithics acumen to stake their careers on this perceived avalanche of fractured stone. Leaky had passed away in 1972. So that was a year after Leakey. Leakey was the one saying, no, man, it's old, 200,000 years old, and therefore could not rebuke Haynes. So they went, everybody went with Haynes' uh, theory. Instead, the entire affair was left in D. Simpson's capable lap, but with no funding and academic support virtually gone. Right, so I want to go a little bit more ahead. I recommend you guys uh, look for this article online and uh, read it. just want to read the concluding uh, statement. He broke down all the inconsistencies when they're trying to debunk this like they just make no sense you know they're just trying to see it's natural they have no real proof so it says here concluding statements this has been a survey of the issues and controversies surrounding the calico early man site and a report on highly preliminary data garnered from classifying the specimens from master pits one and two the combined indications tend to favor an archaeological identity for the calico collection you gotta understand 
you know, there's over 70,000 artifacts they got. And many and many of them could be easily seen, as it says there. If there is another spot on Earth that produces fractures like this naturally, it needs to be identified. He, they're saying, show me another place on the Earth that has so many artifacts that look man-made that you're saying are so natural. Where else are you finding this in the world that you're concluding that off? Conversely, there are thousands of pieces. Out of the 70,000, there are thousands of pieces that could easily be accepted as artifacts. Anywhere you have Pleistocene archaeology, except Coleco. Basically, what he's saying is you can find thousands of these same artifacts that you find in Calico, California and places where they accept, you know, old ages like in Africa and Asia and a site over there. And they'll say, oh, yeah, that's that's Pleistocene. Yeah, that's man-made, but not in California. Right. Because why? America's not supposed to be that old. Right. Not here. But we've already proven this is a true old world. This is just another one icing on the cake. More coming out of California. All right. You guys got to follow up on this. This is true. I'm telling you, they did the conference. They couldn't prove them wrong. The guy who was sent over there, Leakey, proved, he proved it with science. This is 200,000 years old. They found it in depths of 30 feet. Okay? 200,000 years old. 220 he gave the date. All right? So everywhere except Calico, huh? Calico, early man's site, Mannix Basin, Jermo, California. 100 to 200,000 before the present. Calico Early Man Archaeological Site, 50 miles northeast of Barso, California, in the Calico Hills of the Mojave Desert, is considered to be a napping station or workshop. Virtually all tools and debitage are of fine grained siliceous materials, including chalcedony, shirt, jasper, freshwater limestone, and petrified wood, with shirt and chalcedony predominant. Tens of thousands of lithic specimens have been found at the site. The site is dated between 100,000 and 200,000 before the present, years before the present. Again, due to the early dating, there has been an ongoing debate about whether or which objects are artifacts as opposed to flaked by geological processes. All right, geofacts or nature facts, for example. There's also debate about the degree to which site strata are secure or mixed, although scientific dating seems to show consistently old dates. Clearly older is the Lake Mannix lithic industry. Clearly older, right? Including artifacts found on and just below the surface at elevations above 543 meters, the shoreline elevation of Pleistocene Lake Mannix, which drained approximately 18,000 years ago. Artifacts of the Lake Mannix lithic industry exhibit rock varnished patinas on both their buried and exposed surfaces and are often found embedded in desert pavements. Unlike the younger artifact assemblage, R. Schlemon, 1978, assessed an age for this Lake Mannix lithic industry based on soil profile as OIS 5 Sagamon interglacial 110 to 130,000 years ago. He dated it that as a scientist. This is supported by recent dating based on the age of the sediments containing the stones dated by thermal luminescence of 135,000 years before the present. The Benham and 1998. All right, go look it up. Thermal luminescence dating of sediment from the Calico side, California. Cal 1. Quaternary TL surveys, Nottingham, UK, and by U series on sediment adhering to a Chalcedony core of 200 plus or minus 20,000 years, right? So 220,000 years before the present. And you can look that up with Bischoff, JL, and RJ Schlemdom, TL, QQ, RD, Simpson, RJ Rosenbauer, and Effie Budinger Jr., 1981. A lot of scientists. Uranium series and soils geomorphic dating of the Calico Archaeological Site, California. All right. Those are the sources. Look it up, guys. So I'm going to show you some of the uh, artifacts they found there. It says This is one of them. It says Louis uh, Leakey named this type of tool the Calico Cutter by Facial Shopping and Cutting Cool uh, from Calico Master Pit. All right. So let's go look at it. All right. Again, these are man-made. This is not natural. It's literally cut. All right, so this was found 2.9 meters below the surface. This is what he was calling the hand axis picks, items identical to Paleolithic picks and hand axes collected from Calico site excavation. All right, so you guys can take a look. These right here are Chalcedony or Chalcedony blades from Masterpiece 1 and 2 at the Calico Archaeological Site. All right. 
these are some other ones right here and it says these are multifunction scraper or blade chalcedony or chalcedony blade with a narrow ventral bulb scar at right all right again these are all from calico right they're saying these are all natural that's what they're trying to say that all these are natural thousands and thousands of this they found all right and this is the bladder lead course chalcedony course from which narrow bladelets were struck found at depths from one to five meters below the surface in master pits one and two no natural force could remove sequences of elongated flakes without battering the remaining edges okay look at this this is not natural we got some more right here all right says piercings or boring tools, a selection of piercing or boring rotation tools, engravers recovered from the masterpiece of Calico site. Piercing. Look at that. This is another one right here. Big one. It says this is the beaked graver showing flaked scars. Full dorsal view of three centimeters beak unifacial graver. Detail of working tape shown in next image. Because no natural process could remove flakes in such a patterned manner. Okay? This is not natural. This is not natural. Here's another one. Very pointed here at the top again. And they made it shaped like that. So says this small, finely worked, symmetrical black shirt graver has been created by the sequential removal of dozens of flakes in a patterned manner. The ventral side is a smooth flake bolt found in cemented reddish tan sands at the depth of early, nearly four meters in the low, lower germal found formation. There is no possibility that this object could be a geofact produced by natural geologic processes. There is no possibility. Stop lying to the people. Just because people don't do the research on their own. Go look at it with your eyes. This is not natural, guys. Got some more right here. Reamer fashioned from flake. Coated with powdered aluminum to accentuate morphology. What? With aluminum. Coated aluminum they made this. Come on. Got another one right here. Crescent-shaped chopper scrabro shown by facial flaking and blunted black edge, a definitive tool type in Asia. So this is accepted in Asia, but it's not accepted in California because it's too old there. We got another one right here. Okay. And it says, Crescentic chopper of Chalcedonia Jasper from depths of 6.8 meters and Master Pit 2. This says here, a definitive chopper subtype in Asia known as a scrabro. So this is also accepted in Asia, but not here in California. They're also saying that this might even, uh, they made it look like a bison. So some more uh, scabro-like crescent choppers. All right, again, all these are uh, accepted in Asia. Here's another one right here. All right. And another one right here, see how it's shaped. Notched scraper, worksite of unifacial chalcedony flake, unofficially prepared multi purpose scraper from a depth of 4.3 meters uh, below the eroded surface of Yermo Farm. There is overall flaking on the dorsal side. The concave working edge is retouched and shows signs of use wear. All right, this is another example right here that they found in Calico. And it's interesting because this one right here, they're going to show you, it actually has a design. Suppose it has a mammoth. The other ones were supposed to look like mammoths. This is an example of what they're saying. There's like a, I guess this is the trunk and the head. And there's like a, all right. So they're saying it's a mammoth. Uh, and a lot of these flags are supposed to be art or what they call in paleo art interpretation. But this is a multi purpose flake tool jasper flake with bifacial face flake and including long ribbon flake scars on both sides a multi-purpose tool with retouch and de de denticulate margins that show use wear all right they found this about 3.3 meters uh, below the surface look at this another tool right here okay Two Calico convex scrapers. Jasper flake with bifacial flake, flake and including long ribbon flake scars on both sides, a multi purpose tool with retouch and denticulate margins that show use wear. Okay. 
And again, they're saying there's a mammoth here. It almost does look like this is a mammoth, the ear, the body, and the eye, and the trunk coming down. That's amazing. Look at that. It says, tentatively based on the photo, I suggest the scraper on the left has a blade-like removal intended to create a resemblance of the entire piece to a mammoth. The blade removal representing the trunk. All right, look at that. Wow. So that was just a few couple examples of uh, what they found there. And so this is a controversial subject, you know, a lot of controversial sites cover it, but it actually, I wanted you guys to know it was actually a real investigation done by real important uh, anthropologists. I mean, the number one's in their field, man. I'm talking about the guy who proved supposedly that everybody came out of Africa, right? Same guy. So we're going to believe that. Why not believe when he's saying this is 200,000 years old, human occupation? So see, one of the strangest and most controversial archaeological sites in North America is the Calico Early Man site. It is located midway between Los Angeles and Las Vegas, and more exactly, just outside the town of Barstow in San Bernardino County in the central Mojave Desert of Southern California, right? And they have another picture right here of some uh, flints they found there, Calico Early Man, 200,000 years old. Look at that. They're pointing. These are 20,000. They're saying these are 200,000. Look at this one right here. That's not a natural. Man, these are, yeah, a lot of human touch. This is uh, some of the picture of the site here. It's an ancient, ancient lake, right? Is the Calico Early Man site one of the most overlooked and important ancient sites in North America? In 1942, amateur archaeologists discovered what they believed to be primitive stone tools in this area, but were the tools made by humans or through typical geological process? All right, so again, they've already proven it to be human. A lot of that stuff cannot be made by nature. Dozens of rocks that bear a strong resemblance to prehistoric tools have been found at the site. The fragments were embedded in the sediments of the shoreline of an ancient Pleistocene era lake called Lake Mannix. A stone from the master pit had been dated to over 200,000 years before the present. However, several scientists point out this date could have been the result of the contamination from other elements in the soil. All right, so now they don't want to give it, even though the test, their own test, their own test proved it to be that old, right? Their own test. But because it's in America, like, no, it can't be that old. No, no, we're no, don't let them know. No, no, you got to, can't tell them the truth. America's a true old world. Where's the oldest land? Laurentian Mountains. Remember, Dr. Lewis S. B. Leakey, a Kenyan paleontologist and archaeologist, considered the Calico Early Man site to be of great archaeological importance, and he studied the area. According to Dr. Leakey, thousands of artifacts found in this barren desert environment were er eerily similar in appearance and manufacture to those he found in Africa. This striking similarity intrigued and mystified him. Dr. Leakey was in many ways a remarkable scientist. His first important African discovery in 1948 was the skull of Miocene hominid, all right? A Miocene hominid, not human, modern humans, all right? Which he named Procosul Africanus. Today, it is believed that this ape-like creature is not human. I told you, that's not the oldest human. They lied to you. That's what everybody is using and going off to come with their out of Africa theories. It's an ape-like creature. Is that where you are? You believe in uh, evolution? It lived from approximately 23 to 14 million years ago and was likely a common ancestor of both humans and other primate species and monkeys. Most of Dr. Leakey's significant discoveries were found in northern Tanzania at Oduvite Gorge. This area is particularly rich fossils because of its unique geological history. All right, so we got his history again. He was very credited, basically. So if you're going to believe him with that, even though, you know, that's not even humans, if you're going to believe him with that, why not believe him when he's telling you it's 200,000 years old? 200,000 years old. Man-made artifacts. We're back in the book, American Indian Myths and Mysteries by Benson H. Gaddis. This is Dr. Leakey's investigation, right? Dr. Leakey, right here, suspected that the site had been an ancient workshop for making stone tools for many millennia. Now let's go back to where we left off. We were talking about the Calico International Conference at San Bernardino County Museum, all right? 
where they listened to lectures and examined the evidence, the astonishing depths of which artifacts had been found, plus the nature of the soil, has led some geologists to believe that 200,000 to 500,000 years is more probable estimates, all right? More probable estimates. And you see this one, that's a footnote. You can go to the back of this book and see the source, all right? That happened. That was in Calico International Conference, 1970. A date of approximately 50,000 years for man in South Southern California was confirmed in 1974. In 1929, the late Malcolm J. Rogers, a former director of the Museum of Man, Balboa Park, San Diego, discovered a skull, jawbone, ribs, and other bones at two sites in Del Mar and La Jolla near San Diego, preserved by the long discarded clam and mollusk shells that had surrounded them. The remains had been exposed by erosion. Early in 1974, an age of 48,000, the 50,000 years was announced by Dr. Jeffrey Bada of the Scripps Institute of Oceanography. La Jolla, after using a new technique of bone dating that he had developed, primitive camp debris has since been recovered from the sites. The skull is on public view at the museum. To the surprise of the scientists, the skull does not resemble those of ancient Amerindians of the Northwest, Eskimos, or the Mongoloid people of Asia. Nope, it's not Mongols, but more closely resembles those of an early race of man in Japan. Hmm. Are you talking about the Ainu people? So you're saying it actually resembles the Ainu people more than the Eskimos. Okay. These ancient Americans from Southern California. According to Dr. Spencer L. Rogers, scientific director at the museum, Dr. George Carter of Texas A&M University, who had requested the re-examination of the bones, has insisted that the real antiquity of man in America was on the order of magnitudes of 100,000 years. And the sources there, you can look it up. Soon after this discovery, Dr. Sheldon P. Applegate, Associate Curator of the Los Angeles County Museum of Natural History announced the finding of evidence that man was in Mexico 50,000 years ago. A large number of obsidian and flint implements were found in fossil beds of that age at the southern tip of Baja, California. Even older artifacts may have been discovered on America's East Coast. Dr. Bruce E. Ramos, Professor of Anthropology at Harvard College, Oneonta, New York, reported in 1970 finding primitive tools along a 10-mile stretch surrounding a creek in eastern central New York. Various studies of the molded clay, quartzite, and silicified limestone tools, together with the weathering profile in H. patina, have set their age at a minimum of 70,000 years. Minimum, again, yo, Everybody, listen, minimum. These are things they never told you in school and you can follow up on all these, all right? 70,000 years, all right, of human, at least there in that place, minimum, minimum, minimum. There's a source for that. This book has sources. Trust me, verify what he's saying. More and more evidence currently being discovered supports the great antiquity of man in America. And a battle may be shaping up between the geologists and the anthropologists. All right, there's a battle. <laughs> they got their own little battle, these geologists and anthropologists. You hear that? Over the antiquity of man, antiquity of how old you are in America. In a report to the Geological Society of America, three scientists said they had uncovered evidence indicating man had been in Mexico as long as 250,000 years ago. Okay, Dr. Roald Frenel of Washington State University, Dr. Harold E. Maldi and Virginia Steen McIntyre, both of the U.S. Geological Survey, explained they had dated by several independent methods a number of stone tools found in an ancient Mexican river bed. Continuing in the book further ahead, it says, Nevertheless, the oldest and most advanced civilizations were in South America. All right. They're telling you right here what the oldest and what most advanced civilizations were in South America. A vast antiquity here is evident in the ruins under the lava flows and at Lake Titicaca. Here, the mysteries of countless ages await the study of skilled minds. 
and Latin American scientists who have led in the research are appalled at their own ignorance, and the trail of the Totems is northward. Perhaps the belief of an ancient birthplace for man arises from known history, but there is a vast unknown history. Unknown history, the truth about America, right? What part are we on? Man's oldest remains to date were found in Africa. They're talking about that monkey ape, the ape-like monkey. They're talking about that. That's what they're talking about. That's not a human. They haven't found anything over there. That's a that's a monkey. If a man does have a terrestrial birthplace, it could be somewhere on the slopes of the Andes, on the Argentine pampas, or in the Amazon basin. There were migrations from the east, west, and north. These new arrivals may have found man already here. There was already people here, okay? There was people here from all over the place they came. But there was already people here. The red man then would truly be the Native American. All right? So whatever they mean, couple colored man, <laughs> untold centuries ago. 